In this video I'm going to show you a tutorial of how to mill your own lumber with the uh, Woodland Mills HM126 or any comparable at home sawmill. Um, I know they're all a little bit different but the, the theory is pretty much the same. So we have the HM126 and a uh, you know the tractor as you can see here. Um, these are just things I've picked up along the way that make it easier, you know, little tips and tricks that I've learned. Uh, when I first started out, I looked on YouTube and I, I saw a lot of information, but no one really went fully into detail on secrets and, and just beginning to end tutorials. So that's what this is. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so step one is getting the log on the sawmill. Uh, you can do it a few different ways. I normally don't do it that way, I use the forks, but I don't know, I just tried it that way for some reason. So basically it's got these uh, bars here and there's slots for them all the way down the line. But when you first start out you want to use these ones at the 45 degree angle so you can turn the log and it won't catch, it'll kind of help uh, facilitate the roll movement I guess um, so you get those set up they can't be too high because your your blades gonna come about right there so you gotta check that because you'll destroy a blade if you don't it's happened to me a couple times but I learned pretty quick because they're $20 blades so now the next thing you're gonna want to do or I do every day you know is check the oil obviously it's been sitting so it should be Easy to tell, looks like it's perfect. I just changed the oil on it. So after you check the oil, it's good to check the water. It uses this water tank to lubricate the blade and you mix soap in with it. This here's a little indicator to uh, show you what level the water's at, which is pretty low, so we'll add some. So you take your jugs of water, open them up, Lindsay bought this really crappy organic soap, which it sucks, so that's why I'm using it on this. Doesn't take grease off of nothing. So I add some, doesn't take a lot. And the reason why I add them to these first is because when you add them just to the tank, it sinks to the bottom and it kind of clogs up the whole thing. You just give it a quick shake like that. now it takes about two and a half gallons or something like that so so then the next thing you want to do is this is the blade tensioner and so you got to tighten it every time and loosen it I'm doing it one-handed here so this always gets in the way I put it up there cuz it's getting the way and the way you tell is this thrust bearing if you look at it from the top it needs to be flush with that casing thing on there so that should do it like that. Pretty much ready to mill. So I checked the gas earlier, or yesterday before I left. Um, so that should be good. So next thing we'll start milling. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna put the camera under the tree. Now we're pretty much ready to mill. I mean, I now we're pretty much ready to mill. So I checked the gas earlier, or yesterday before I left. Um, so that should be good. So next thing we'll start milling. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna put the camera under the tree. Okay, so the next thing 
is this handle here raises and lowers the entire head of the sawmill. As you can see, as you can see down here, it corresponds to where that blade is on the log. Now, you gotta take about an eighth of the log off on each side, but what I like to do, because if you were just to cut it like that, if you were just to cut it like that, all of this is a wasted piece of wood. Whereas if you just cut the top off, the bark, then you can cut an inch slab off and then you have uh, a usable slab down the road, kind of like we've done over there. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Obviously it'd be easier just to make one cut and be done with it, but then that piece would probably turn into firewood and it'd be unusable. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off about, I don't know, an inch and a half to start with, and then we'll be able to get a nice one by whatever slab and a usable piece. So you always want to make sure that this guard is as close to the log as you can without touching it. Um, it's got these like, I don't know what they're called, little guides I guess that keep the blade from, from waving, you know, it kind of helps stabilize the blade. I had it, I know this because I had it completely backed off and I was getting waves in the board and I was like, why is that? Well, I learned the hard way and it's because this needs to be as close as it can to the log. Another thing it, that's really important is wearing ear protection and eye protection. These have like a foam thing around the outside. I don't know if you could see it or not. Um, it helps keep dust out of your eyes. So I wear these and also a mask, which, you know, masks, man. This is about the only time I ever wear a mask is when it's uh, logical is to wear a mask because there's a lot of fine dust particles from the the wood which you wouldn't believe how many there are when the sun is shining boy and if you breathe that stuff the first day I didn't wear a mask and I could feel it in my lungs my lungs hurt so uh, it's important to wear safety safety gear Okay, so we made our first pass. I turned the motor off because uh, you can't really hear me over it. So now what I do is I get the, the blade directly where it was before. And the way I could do that is just play with it and wait till you see it just barely slide on the top. Okay. Then the next thing you do is come over here and this is adjustable so you can adjust it. So I'll just set it at whatever I'll just set it at whatever mark it is, you know, say it's on 16 or closer to 15. And I use this side, so I'll just go 16. It's at the top of 16. So what I do is lower it down to the top of 15 plus another quarter crank. And that's the blade thickness. So now, so now we're ready to mill a one by slab off of it and that's usable.
Now what we have to do is unclamp it and we'll roll it 90 degrees. So this side will sit flush with these guys and it's real important to do that because that sets the stage for how square our entire lumber stack is going to be. Of course, when I'm trying to do a demonstration, it fights me and everything tangles up, but you get the point. You loosen that, you gotta wrestle with it a little bit. That's the hard part. And then you get that lined up with those ones so it's square. That's real important. So that sets up a 90 degree angle for our next cut. Okay, now we got a nice 90 degree angle. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna rotate it 90 degrees, except for this time, it'll sit on its own. It won't try to roll because it's not round, and so it sits right in perfectly. It's a little harder to rotate because it wants to catch because it's not round, but you'll see. So there it is sitting. So then a crucial part now is you gotta really watch these because I've cut them before. Right now we're good. Um, so I'm gonna cut this one square. We'll flip it again. And then we switch out to these smaller, uh, these smaller ones here. That way we don't cut them, we get lower on the saw. We're square on three sides now, so we're down to our final turn, and then we'll be doing lumber. I found it easier on this this final turn if you can slide it back a little ways. It makes it a lot easier because it really wants to catch those bar guide things. And just like that. Now we'll swap out our long ones for our short ones. I always keep these handy because we'll need them again. This thing is to the outside, it's to help it sliding down too far, but literally that's as far as you need to go because it'll hold it on its own. Same thing on this one. Pull it out. Pull it All the way down. Yeah, and at this point, you really don't need to clamp it because it's heavy enough, it won't move. So, we will need to clamp it later though. Okay, now that we got what is called a cant, this big rectangular thing is called a cant, uh, we're ready to start talking about lumber. And there's a bunch of different ways to cut these up. Uh, man, I'm no expert when it comes to like rift saw and 
all sorts. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And I think generally that refers to a circle sawn sawmill because it can cut different. But anyways, a bandsaw sawmill, we'll basically just look at it and measure it out and see what we can get and what's most efficient with the least amount of waste. So to do that, basically run a tape for like 10 and 15 sixteenths by, I don't know, nine and nine sixteenths. So I need two by sixes. So I probably, if I cut a six inch cant here, well, no. So if I cut a six inch cant here, that'll leave me another four inches there for two by fours. So I'll have two by sixes here, two by fours at the rest, and then we'll only have a small waste of scrap at the end. So that makes more sense to do it that way. So we'll turn it back over on 90 degrees. We'll cut a six inch, we'll cut a four inch, and then we'll have a scrap piece. Okay, basically, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to zero it out. Basically, what that means is you put your bandsaw at the very top of the cant, and then you come over here, and you put it at whatever's relevant. So it, it could be anything. It could be 12. It could be 11. I just go by inches. That way it's easy. So I'm at 12. I could slide it up to 11 or down to 13. We'll just call it 12. And then what I do is take the crank and I lower it down six inches. There's one, two. Oh, it's a little less than six inches, so we're gonna lower it down a little bit more. There's six inches right there. So we got our six inch cant, but we gotta get it out of the way so that we can mill this thing down to four inches. And right now it's currently at just under five inches. So what we'll do is we'll slap it back down. Same thing goes, we zero it out, and then we drop it and we measure it so we're at four inches and ready to ready to mill. Now what we got to do is get these guys upright. Uh, we got to get these bars up a little higher to hold them because we're going to be cutting two inches off of each one of them. So. So same thing, we zero it out, make sure that blade is just at the top, but this time we're going to be taking two inches off at a time, because that gives us two by fours and two by sixes, so we'll center that at 11. All right, now that uh, a two by four and a two by six is milled, uh, we have to give it a good sweeping to get all these fibers out of the, the grain. It's real important. So I'll go through and sweep these. Uh, it won't dry right if those uh, fibers are there. It also makes it more susceptible to mold and mildew and whatnot. So I go through one at a time and sweep the top. and. Uh, what I do next is I pick them up and uh, I'll stack them over there except for I'm going to rotate them 180 degrees so that I can sweep off the other side over there all at the same time. So.
you'll repeat that process all the way down the line. Ran out of gas. All right, so we got our two by fours and our two by sixes cut. The next thing we'll do is we'll sweep off the other side of them. Now they've got to cut, we got to pack them around to the lumber yard area. Here's the lumber yard area. Uh, I put these pieces of metal on top of them to keep the rain off, yet they have to ventilate from the side so that the wood can dry out. And what, I, what I'll do here is I'll put stickers down. So I cut these, I do them uh, one by twos or one by inch and a half. As long as the height is the same, they can kind of vary on the width. So I'll just start stacking our lumber nice and neat right here, and row by row. Now that we got a full stack, I got this sprayer and it's filled with half water, half water, half vinegar. And so I pump it up and spray it over the top to help uh, keep mildew and bacteria. And it's supposed to help it dry out quicker, but I don't know if it does that or not. Next, we'll go down with uh, six more stickers. It's important that these stickers are lined up directly above one another. That way the weight holds right on, on top of each other because if it's not, then it'll, it'll warp the boards and stuff. So. And we'll pack the rest of our, our lumber over here. And that's the process. Just got to do that about 600 to 800 more times. And then I've unlocked the opportunity to build my own house on a budget.